Why are you not afraid of the high price that is paid? Because obviously, uh, I mean, you've also spoken about it's not necessarily a conspiracy. It's, it's not it's, at all. It's a political, social disposition. Exactly. There's politics involved. Why should I be afraid? I'm not, but I'm a not lot afraid. of people are afraid to be unpopular, to take the side of Israel. It's easier to side against you. On a personal level, what motivated you in this, and why are you unafraid to be... Unpopular? To, yeah. Is it, look, you have to understand something. What makes, makes you different from the French elite of intellectuals, politicians, etc.? Well, first, I think something very... I'm not a journalist. And this makes me very different because I'm not part of their club, you know. And I became, I came naive, you know, in this group, you know. And I didn't realize that it was such an incredible thing for them to admit when they're, that they're making mistakes. So I was naive. I said, hey, look, it's a hoax. Please look at No. And for me, it was so absurd. So it's not, a, you know, I, I was unconscious mm -hmm. of, the, of the obstacle. But if you look at it clearly, I mean, I mean, it's less dangerous fighting this kind of stuff in a court of justice mm -hmm. than going in any army in the world and uh, spending the week. You understand what I mean? Absolutely. Now, I have to give you a compliment in the sense of even your physical disposition and your temperament. You seem very confident, quite jovial, quite happy in some ways. The frustration hasn't gotten to you. The many threats times. haven't gotten to you. No, not the threat. I, I had many frustrations. Well, you have many you had times. threats as well. Well, not interesting, Fritz. Okay. But I tell you something. I had some frustration. I cried sometimes in my bed. I really cried. I was so upset. But some at the end, you know, you believe that you think, okay, it's a historical fight. We're not working for the newspaper of tomorrow. We're work working for the next generations. So I know it's difficult. If it was so easy, it wouldn't be so difficult. It wouldn't be so historical. You know, history, you don't write it. Um, so easily. So I know it's a difficult, and I know that I have the truth, and the truth is an icebreaker. I'm fighting for the truth, and I'm not alone. I have many allies, I have many people working with me yeah. who are helping me and who are thinking in the same way, and we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. And each and every day we're getting supporters, and we'll win at the end because the truth, I mean, nobody can fight against the truth. But but when you say we'll win in the end, yes, the truth often comes out. Let's see, you know, like my contempt for the left, for instance, is I was very interested in the Cold War. The left is saying, the, you, know, uh, you know, the Rosenbergs are innocent. Rosenbergs are innocent. Then it's proven that the Rosenbergs are guilty. And then they're saying, well, they had a reason to do it. They're always changing their tactics because it's something deeper. So first they deny, then they justify. Do you think this is the same? In other words, let's say that tomorrow the boy and the father show up and they're alive. Do you think there will be a mass nostra culpa? I'm sorry, Philip Carcenti, no, because for the entire no, community. Because what their argument is, oh yes, but you know, this boy represents, even if it's not true, this boy represents the so-called 950 kids who were killed, as they say, you know, sometimes in their propaganda. But if you look at the Canadian debate, I said, wait a minute. The only picture of a boy killed you could bring to us for the last 10 years, according to you, according when you said that there was 950, is a fake picture? Can't you bring a real document? Can't you bring something which is true? No. So you understand, of course some people die in the Middle East, of course some kids have been killed, but the only one they were able to bring yeah. was a fake document. Why? Because I claim that there is no intentional shooting in the Israeli to shoot a boy or a father because it doesn't make sense. I mean, yeah. you know exactly what are the rules of engagement of the Israeli soldiers. You know that it doesn't work that way. I mean, the guy who tried and shoot and kill a boy would have would be suspended. Your case has killed. already been proven, but as we're saying, when it becomes even beyond a shadow of a doubt to anybody to see, you're not waiting for an I'm sorry or a mea culpa. I don't even think this will materialize from the other side. Oh, yes, it will. You mean even from the opponents today? Or Charles and Dolin, the French rule, the yeah. Israeli will never do that. But the French government one day will mm -hmm. be forced to ask France to, to admit the fraud. And this is my only goal. My job stops when France too says, we are sorry, this is a fake news report, we made a mistake, or we were manipulated, or whatever. And it will come one day, because, you know, as I told you, the truth will come out one day. One day, there will be someone powerful in France say, wait a minute, how can I have we been supportive of this blood libel for so many years? If you look at the history, you know, if you look at 
always these kind of lies where when it's so obvious are coming out. We have a couple minutes left. Let me touch on a few things. When you said you cried several times, I'll say that some of the things, I mean, I, I've been dedicated to many of the same things you've been dedicated to. Uh, many things have affected my sleep, especially the case of Ilan Halimi, mm -hmm. the Jewish boy that was tortured for 22 days in Paris. Mm -hmm. I want to use this a little bit as a contrast. The, how, the people that are opposed to you how many of these same people were indignant and outraged at what happened to this boy and the product of, and it was the product, obviously, of anti-Semitism. Um, not to make my question too long, but he was a victim of anti-Semitism, but it appears that French society denied that that was the case, correct? Yeah, but even worse, because you don't know that our cases are related by our lawyers. I'll tell you something, you know, Ilan Halimi's lawyer, the families of Ilan Halimi's lawyer, his name is Francis Piner, and Francis Piner, who is a Jewish lawyer, is also the lawyer of France too, at my trial. So the one who has been pretentiously defending the hmm. Ilan Halimi family has been the one who has been accusing me of being a conspiracy theorist. So it tells you a lot about the French system. This man was appointed by Jacques Chirac to support uh, the Ilan, Ilan Halimi family, and he's been chosen by France to to defame me at the Court of Justice. It's very important. You know how he called me at the Court of Justice? He said that I was the hybrid of a Holocaust denier and the people who claimed that 9-11 was an inside job. So it's very important to understand. Even when the guys, you know, are good on this side of Ilana Limi's story, they're very bad on that one. I want to talk about that story for a second. A young man tricked into meeting, uh, apparently, a beautiful girl, was kidnapped, this was a Muslim gang, if mm -hmm. I'm correct. The um, leader is a Muslim, not all the gang is Muslim. But they were calling the mom uh, screaming verses yeah. from the Quran, and it was very clear that this was a kidnapping and a torturing connected to anti Semitism, correct? Clearly. Am I correct that members of the apartment building where this happened had also participated in the torture That's of this also Jewish true. boy? Am I correct that the French police refused to admit that this was a case of anti-Semitism in the beginning? Yeah, that's true. 